Good evening, everybody, or afternoon, or morning, depending on where you are and how you're doing. My name is Octavian, and I am joined by Blaster Boy, who's going to be doing a little bit of color commentary on the desk for me today. And we're going to be getting into one of our first, actually, I think our first, round of 32 match for our playoffs. So that's exciting. We're, we're going to be kicking off the playoffs here, me and Blaster here. I, I think. I don't know. I, Pretty close. I, we broadcasted one yesterday. Because I, I remember there was supposed to be a match yesterday that we actually were supposed to cast, but it, one of the teams yeah. backed out. Um, but there may very well be. The earlier one. one. The earlier one did end up happening yesterday. Oh. So, unfortunately, we was... missed out on the action. Yeah. We were close. We're close. Number two, well, still pretty respectable. Yeah. Second is good enough. I'll settle for a silver medal. Um, UNC Charlotte is going to be facing off against Vanderbilt here, however. And UNC Charlotte will be on the blue side and Vanderbilt on the red, as you can see by the fancy, dancy little overlay that we've got for you folks. Now, we're going to be getting through the picks and bands here. The bands have already come through, in fact. Um, some curious ones. Victor hasn't really seen the band list for a little while, at least not in Season 7. But some other pretty standard ones as well coming out, such as the Maokai, the Varus, really sort of s tier first string champions in the current meta yeah uh the victor ban it is a little bit curious if it wasn't a huge target ban in this case against uh man in the mid lane for unc charlotte he has 50 games on victor so far this season sporting a 58 percent win rate so very very respectable uh, on that champion something he's incredibly comfortable on even just this year alone but they do still get Rengar nonetheless, and there are still a few top-tier picks up. Jin is another one of them with Varus banned away. There's really only one or two other options in this current meta for ADCs, assuming it's is locked in. Yeah, and Jin and Varus are kind of the S-plus tier, if you want to. Um, Pretty much, rated, yeah. <laughs> rated by fighting game terminology, because they are the utility-heavy, decent-range AD carries, in the case of Varus, very long-range AD carries that can also take advantage of the state that lethality is in right now, which is arguably not the most balanced state. Um, but we, we shouldn't talk about hovers. That's a general rule as it gets swapped over yeah. potentially to a Talon here. I, I do think that the Jin is the right choice. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep. Because you, you, you see that Varus is already out of the picture. Jin is the only other one sort of at that level. There are some other AD carries very close to that, Ash is strong, Sivir is strong, basically the other utility AD carries thrown into the mix, but yeah. they don't take advantage of the lethality really as well. Yeah, they definitely don't, and they still do respectable enough damage, but utility is really king right now, and that's that's one of the reasons why Varus and Jin are two of their very strong ones, because they can bring decent amounts of damage while also bringing a lot of utility to the table. Ash is a little bit... Uh, less bursty than each of those champions, more damage over the duration of the fight focus. She wants to be weaving in autos for as long as possible, basically. And she still brings a huge amount of utility to the team, so we might see that here. Uh, some other notable ones, this season right now, and it will vary between solo queue, but uh, Virtuoso has 92 games on Jin and 58% win rate. So that was a takeaway from him as well. But he also plays quite a lot of Ezreal, which is being covered right now, 35 games with 46% win rate. Not the highest win rate that you could really have there, but he still has a lot of experience on that. That's still a very respectable number of games. But we're going to see a Ramus locked I, in. I want to curb your enthusiasm for just a moment here, Blaster. There was chatter between these two teams in the pregame lobby. Some of these players don't actually have all of the champions. Um, ah. And so okay. what we do sometimes in that situation is a pick will be picked as a proxy. Um, yes. So that it, you then remake the match and you can sub in that champion for another one so that you don't have to give away anything during the pick ban phase just because you don't own every champion in the game. Now, this still could be a Ramus. I haven't actually heard news from either team. But I just want to temper our expectations because it's very possible that this unusual Armadillo pick could just be a proxy. Yeah, we will have to see how exactly that works out. Uh, Kha'Zix being hovered on the other end, though, and that will be going over to Ominous Mirror, very likely in that jungle. Another very strong pick, similar tier to Rengar, mm -hmm. funnily enough, at the moment. Uh, a very good lethality user, and incredibly strong at the moment. One of the most popular junglers there really is. We will be seeing what looks to be an Alistair, which does make quite a lot of sense with uh, some of the current 
meta in the top lane that that leaves them the freedom of not of going a non tank or a less tanky pick uh, in that top lane role while still having somebody that can deal a lot of CC, initiate for the team, etc. So really smart from Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, they're leaving themselves open to some more options here. Yeah, um, it does leave them a little bit open to a punishing support pick into the Alistair. Um, yeah. Something like a Zyra or not, probably Nami. Like this fortune. Yeah, Nami. Could be a Nami. Do it. Um, or even like a Karma, something along those lines. Yeah. Um, but it looks like we're going to be having a Diana and a York locked in. That Ramus has to be a proxy pick then. Because they, Must be. They don't have Must be. Otherwise. Could be support Ramus. This, that is I technically suppose. an option. <laughs> technically, there are a lot of things that are options, Master yeah. Boy. But you know, our our job is is not to look at the big picture here as analysts. <laughs> our job is to try and narrow it down to the reasonable things. But um, yeah. I think the Diana and Yorick, neither of those look like proxy picks to me. No, they're, they're odd for sure. But yeah, thirty. Huh. Uh, and, Gabe and, has okay. thirty eight games on York this season. So this is something that he picks. Oh man, there was spam in the chat before about Timo. And well, I say spam. All right. So I'm being told right now yeah. there were actually quite a few proxy okay. picks. Here. Yeah. Ramus equals Lulu. So that's our support pick there. The oh, we're gonna get back into it. Give us just a yep. moment here. I didn't even have time to read <laughs> through the chat, but the players were aware that there were proxy picks going back and forth, and yep. so both teams were picking around their opponents' picks, even if we as the casters couldn't see it, which makes our job confusing but interesting <laughs> for sure. Um, as my client is having some issues loading in, there we go. Go ahead and transition back over, and so that does mean actually something we can talk about here. It was a Yorick and a Diana as their solo. Yes, yeah. that's really cool. Yep. Yeah, very, very cool picks there. Um, I got to play Diana and Earth yesterday. You were there. Uh, not the exact measure of a regular Diana, but you don't, you don't it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a pretty good time, I've got to say. No, uh, in general, Diana, I feel, is pretty strong. Mm -hmm. She's like been right on the edge. I'm not sure how she'll fare into somebody like the Rise. Uh, that's going to be kind of dicey, I feel. But they are going to be getting through these picks very quickly mm -hmm. and... Yeah, the Yorick and Diana still stick. Lulu is swapped in. Zyra swapped in for the Alistair. So there is actually a big tank in that top lane in the form of that Nautilus instead. So he's a great initiator. He's going to be able to facilitate picks for this Kha'Zix. The Rise and Jin and Zyra will all have ways to follow up on that with their own snares and various forms of CC as well. So this is... A very pick-heavy comp, but they also have quite a lot of damage and a lot of different ways to deal with multiple members as they're sort of filing in as this dive composition from uh, UNC will be doing. So I feel like this is pretty smart from Vanderbilt overall, and they're stretching their legs a little bit here as well. In their series against Duke, which is the last one they played, if I'm recalling correctly, yes. and they played it on stream, uh, looking over their picks and bans there, this is quite a bit different from what they had there. They consistently had Maokai and Lee Sin in their top and jungle roles every single game that series. They had two Corkies, they had two Jins, they had two Zyras. So there are some things that are consistent here. And uh, But I, I do hope that UNC will kind of push this draft from Vanderbilt in the future uh, throughout the series because we are guaranteed at least one more game uh, after this regardless of the result. I hope that that's something that's punished because Vanderbilt did not just completely clean, clean sweep Duke even though they got really good picks consistently. They lost the game and then came back in the third game with the same picks more or less. I think they swapped their support and they won that game. Vanderbilt is very wishy-washy even when they get very comfortable picks for themselves. So I, I really want to see how they deliver here and I hope that UNC can punish them in the future for these Seemingly small champion pools. They haven't really pushed themselves too far uh, in the in the eye of the campus series quite yet. All right. Well, with all that said, we're going to have to hop into a little bit of a spectator delay, as you can see on your screen here. Just before we do so, though, I would like to shout out some of our sponsors, as well as mention that we are currently here at the CSL hiring a social media manager. If you think you've got the chops to work for us, 
head on over to cstarleague.com for a bit more information. But on top of that, some of our sponsors are the illustrious Band Gaming, who you're shortly going to be seeing a very small advertisement for, which is a social app and the social app of the CSL. It's got features which allow you to create groups, boards, calendar functions, polls, chats, so many different things you could possibly need for pulling together all your friends and getting them to actually have a organized game night for once. Uh, as well as that, we are sponsored by Twitch.tv, a platform you should be familiar with if you're listening to my voice right now, and Asus, who are purveyors of fine gear for building your computers and setting up your perfect esports rig, as well as all your accessories, mice, keyboards, things like that. All that said, though, we're going to hop into a quick commercial break, give us just one more minute here to get through the spectator delay, and we'll be right back with you. Only $14.99. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. everybody welcome to the rift though it seems like my rift in particular is having some issues oh. right now um, there we go there we go <laughs> i don't know what was up with that i think riot spectator <laughs> client had a little bit of an oopsie but that's okay it seems to be running just fine now just to check in bless you you're at 12 13 seconds right yes all right good we're on the same mark here and uh yeah my name is octavian as you heard my co-caster there he is named Blaster, and we're going to be getting into some very, very solid gameplay here. Something we didn't hit on is that we, well, we did hit on the fact that we're now in the round of 32. We're at the very start of the playoffs. But we didn't yep. hit on the fact that both of these teams were quite successful in the regular season. Um, yeah. They both had four and one records. UNC might, might find Jiwoo here. UNC has a slightly cleaner record. Um... It's four on one on both sides in terms of series, but the the victories for UNCs were all 2-0 sweeps. Whereas on the side of um, Vanderbilt, two out of no, three out of four of their victories were two and one. So they dropped um, three more games. They dropped three games in total in all of their victorious seasons, uh, in all of their victorious series, rather. Pluralizing that word was difficult for some reason. Um, and as such, they may just be a slightly messier team, not know how to close out games quite as easily, and that can be the sticking point in a matchup where you're going to be relatively even. 
Yeah, I feel like that matches up pretty well with the point that I made in Champ Select before about how even though they basically got they got multiple of the same picks across a three game series versus Duke, it still went two one. Even when they had a, the virtual virtually the same composition between game one, which they won, and game two, which they lost it didn't really make much of a difference for them in terms of the absolute final results. So there is something to take note of there for Vanderbilt, for sure. And uh, that's definitely what I'm going to be on the lookout for. I want to see how they perform on these slightly different picks than what they had versus Duke and uh, see if they can push themselves a little bit further in this series if need be. All right, and as far as the game at hand, is concerned, however, I do have particular eye towards these solo ones because UNC is looking pretty creative with the meta at the moment. Um, we've got Doric and Diana, two picks that you don't see very often. And something that I noticed on the loading screen there, if I'm up to date on my um, mastery art, I'm pretty sure that Puffy Blade actually oh. Virtuoso product, popping the heal and the exhaust from Lambry as well. That is really, really good for Vandy Landy and Joe the Hobo. Oh man. Man, yeah, that was that's a fantastic start. What it's a really brutal trade from this Zyra Jin lane. They got the level two first off of having just a slightly earlier push. And they were able to take that really, really far, get both of those summoners out. And they still have decent mana, they still have good health. They're in a fantastic position. The only sort of downside is that even though they've had this bit of a lead, their farm is not that far ahead. Notorious up top. Yeah, Dark Processions from Touch Me Gabe forcing the flash out of Zero Eternal, but it's a flash forward from Victoria's oh. Gad, and that's first blood over to the Red Guard. That was quick. Really clean. Yeah, that was very quick from Notorious Gad, but overall very clean and burning the flash of this Nautilus as well, making repeat ganks very easy for himself in the future. And that's a great start for UNC, even though they kind of fell behind a bit in the bottom lane, they've been able to heal up health-wise, and now they're starting to trade back. They just can't get caught by a huge all-in again, and this Rengar, if he can keep the snowball that he has now very quickly started going throughout the rest of this game, he's going to be in a great position. Lambert! Ooh, man. So many snares stacking from this bottom lane of Vanderbilt. Yeah, the interesting thing, though, is that Virtuoso, even though they have been punished for the loss of those summoners, hasn't really been punished in terms of CS. Um, yeah. Ezreal is a very resilient pick, it turns out, and he's been able to actually keep up in terms of farm. So if those summoner losses, and if the health disadvantage never actually turns into a kill, or turns into maybe an early turret take, like that, then yeah. really it, it just means that Virtuoso played out a slightly more dangerous lane. It doesn't actually mean there's any sort of disadvantage moving forward. Yeah, exactly. And it really needs some of to go their way. Zero eternal. Oh man. The session is so very good for forcing those 1v1s and it's a flash forward from Touch Me Gabe. Zero oh. goes down again. That's a, that is a lost top lane. Yeah. It, it's not going to get any easier. That is certainly for sure. Now, he got pretty much everything he could have gotten there. He, he got a good hook on the wall, max range. That was as far away as he was going to be able to get. The only real positive that came out of that, if you could even call it that, through the death, is that that kill won't be able to happen again if he gets another good hook like that because there won't be a flash on the Yorick for the next few minutes, but it's just going to be so brutal for him. He's not going to be able to trade whatsoever. He is already at an item deficit. And Touch Me Gabe getting a lead in this lane, it just it opens up another victory condition for the side of UNC because Yorick is such a strong split pusher and if they don't have an answer to that then one of the weaknesses that I thought was going to make a problem for UNC in the draft is they don't have any reliable on the way out. All is getting burst down himself. There's the leap in from Ominous Mirror as he claims a kill. Kazakh's getting one back. Let's see if they can get any of this flash forward under Virtuoso. It's a double kill as the summoners still were down for the most oh, part. Oh, man. And Lambry will fall as well. That is a cleaned up fight to the side of Vanderbilt as they regain some traction on the map in the bottom. And what a great turnaround from them. Perfect siding of the map, too, to make that happen. Oh, Jiwoo. Yeah, man going in. Turning back out of that fight, he wasn't going any further. The exhaust 
takes a little bit out of panic at the end there. But Jiwoo will will hold on to his life. Well, one of the interesting things about exhaust is that since it has that movement speed slow, you can just use it to keep someone in the fight, even if they want, even if they are trying to escape. It drops a little bit of their MR too, so it, you can get slightly more damage. Just ten, you get slightly more damage onto the target, as well on the way out. It does overall feel like most mostly a panic move, but wasn't a complete waste there. He got a little bit onto man, but not very much ultimately. Dragon does go over to Vanderbilt, however, and that was what I was touching on before when I said that that was the perfect side of the map for them to make that uh, turnaround in the bottom lane happen. If if that had happened in the top side, they wouldn't have had much of an objective to go for. They may have been able to go for the turret, but that was really their only option. The Dragon, very good for them. Ocean Drake, especially picking it up this early, uh, considered to be better the earlier on that you get it. Since you're in lane for longer, it can keep you in lane. Since you're on, out on the map uh, longer than you are in the early game than you are later, it can just push that number even higher and let you go back with more and more gold than usual, so... Yeah, Ocean Drake is best to get early on because laning is when you want that sort of sustain. But, yeah. um... It's still not really seem to have much of an effect on Virtuoso, who's still 10 CS up, despite being pushed in this whole time, and despite losing multiple trades. However, it does seem like Vandy Lady and Joe the Hobo might get a little bit more help. As on this mirror now post 6, he's hanging around the bottom side, and there's potentially a Realm Warping Rise coming in as well. Nope, he's going back to mid, he's just getting some vision. Yep, doesn't have very much range on that ulti at level 1. It, it is okay. It's it's not anything to write home about, though. He'll have to get very, very close if he really wants to make a rum warp happen at this point. Probably just going to wait for that level 11, hang out in mid until then, maybe use it for an escape or two. But right now, the big thing to take note of is UNC is taking away the red buff from Vanderbilt, and they get it cleanly with the help of their Yorick domination in the top lane. And that's the kind of thing that you need to be able to, that you need to see from a team that made it into playoffs here in the ULL Campus Series. You need to be able to take a winning lane like that and transition that into objectives elsewhere. And it looks like he did time his buffs properly as well. He took them in, in the correct order to really make that happen, unless I miss a steal. It doesn't look like I have. Yet see that we might see the bottom lane. Not having yeah. a realm warp down, he just wandered away from the mid lane, but there's Touch Me Gabe teleporting. Him. And without very much action, both sides choose to back off. Summoner pulled, I guess, from UNC. Yeah, but not all that much lost quite yet. Zero Eternal has to shove that wave in as quickly as he can here. M maximize the punishment on Touch Me Gay before oh. that teleport. It, it was good reactionary. Oh, gee. Yeah, returning to Ooh. mid lane is going to get a face full of knives, but he won't do all that much damage at the moment. And he'll be just fine walking in that corner. Does get out without too much. Uh, to note of in the end. Didn't lose very much health, as you said. Uh, but like I said, good punishment from Notorious Gad. Uh, well taken advantage of that opening on the red buff, and it looks like he may have even just got his own as well. So this is fantastic for UNC, and just, just to repeat my point before, this is something you need to see from playoff level teams. If you want to go far in playoffs, you have to be willing to make the to take those sort of I guess risks, make those types of calls that are maybe not the safest thing that you can do, but those are the things that'll push you forward in the game and help secure your advantage, even if it's just inch by inch. I think a lot of the um, onus now for pushing this game forward for the side of Vanderbilt is going to be on this Kazakhs, who got two yeah. out of the three kills that happened in the bottom lane. Now to be fair, Vandy Lady got a decent amount of gold himself, and Jin does spike decently well in the mid game. So I think maybe we just see some more plays on the bottom side of the map. That makes the most sense to me. Admittedly, though, Ezreal and Lulu, not exactly the easiest lane to gank. Yeah, definitely last, not. Yeah, they got success last time, but only just because it was counting. Things yeah. Really been used, diving forward into the fight rather than trying to escape. Yeah, fortunately, they do have Jin Zyra, which is a very good lane uh, to be ganked. They they have a lot of tools to be able to secure ganks and really brute force them and make them happen if need be. 
So certainly is an option. Dragon is coming up soon, so we should be seeing a little bit more focus around the bottom side of the map in the next few minutes. It is just a cloud drake though, so maybe not the most. Man. And mid. Maybe they don't oh. need Ominous Mirror in the bottom lane as they're going for a fight down there. But meanwhile in the mid lane, Man of Sex is going to fall as Ominous Mirror shows up for a bit more fun. The flash under the turret from Vandy Landy. We will play the second kill. As three go down over all for the side of Vanderbilt. One does fall in return. Zyra getting a bit too overzealous under the turret. But three for one trade across the board. It is just fine for the side of Vanderbilt. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic trade from them there. And they were able to really... Brute force that fight in the bottom lane. That was this that was what I was talking about with that duo of Jin Zyra. They can really just pull the trigger whenever they want, and then even if you are Ezreal Lulu, it's still going to be very difficult to get away from that. They can just throw everything on you. CC after CC, and the curtain call wasn't even burned there. Yeah. That, even if he, they had gotten away by distance, they still wouldn't have technically escaped if there were good shots from Vandy. So, and now really good for mid. There's a pretty significant growing lead of gold for Vandy Landy. He's got about a 1k lead. As well as that, just being naturally ahead in terms of yeah. when these two champions spike. Ezreal having invested quite heavily into non-combat stats. Things like the tier and the Sheen to some degree getting mana over the pure, raw, unadulterated, lethality-based damage. That yeah. Humans go for the game. Even if there wasn't a lead, I'd still throw this lane right now into the gym. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, that's just... Even if there wasn't a gold lead, yeah, like you said, it, it's an automatic 700 gold in the hole for this Ezreal. So, a thousand gold lead right now is effectively 2,000 for this gen. So, plus the lethality is just so good in general. Like, that's oh, almost man. doubling this down. Oh, man! Promising fight for Vandalani and Joe the Hobo. A lot of crowd control landing. All in pretty low well. well. So, that's curtain call. Not going to pull the trigger, though. Just Quite going to be content cool. with... Yeah. <laughs> he has a gun! Just kidding. <laughs> Jokes. But, uh, yeah, great joke, great joke. <laughs> I try. I, uh, I don't actually try. I, yeah, I believe that. <laughs> Shots fired. Okay. Uh, alright. You just pick no, up enough, my bad. Yeah, uh, enough, enough gun joke. Uh, just going to be content with picking up that farm damage on the turret. That's perfectly fine. Zero eternal. I don't know how much touch me great, but already taking two turret shots by the time Notorious Gad decided to pull the trigger on that side. Touch me great is gonna fall. It is at least traded back as Diana joining the top lane with a teleport. Will finish off the kill onto the Nautilus. Titan of the Depths falling easily. One bullet landing on the Virtuoso. Two, three, and four flying far to the right. However, Ominous Mirror. Doesn't have to uh, fire skill shots. Just points and clicks his Q, walking straight up. Just walked up and press Q. That's all you need to do sometimes. Did he and... just walk up slowly? Yeah, <laughs> <and> press Q. <laughs> no, he kind of did. He kind of did. <laughs> he, he only has tier one boots. He walked up very slowly and press Q. Hmm. It, that just happened. But good kill, good turnaround from Vanderbilt, and they're just on fire in this bottom lane all of a sudden. It it was really dead even in spite of their early uh, summoner spell advantage. And we touched on earlier how they really needed to make something come from it. It just so happened to be in the form of a counter gank, and now they're just out dueling this bottom lane of UNC through that gold lead. They, got, they won a fight. They pushed Lulu, sent her back to base, nearly killed her took the turret, and then fought them again when they came back and got another kill without Ooh. dying. Like, they're so far ahead. It's Diana going ham. Doing good work. Actually, potentially in the top lane as well, as Tajimi Gabe is shoved back under the turret. Does have the Trinity Force completed, though, so he is a bit hot to handle, and I don't think Nautilus is going to push any further on that. However, in the mid lane, Vanderbilt is going to reap the rewards of their shove and claim the second turret of the game, both of which are their own. I suppose they're enemies that they took. <laughs> Your Eternal looking for an engage here as Vandy is in the wing. Yeah. He does have backup coming in, um, and Touch Me Gabe realizes that even if he didn't have vision in the which is actually but just the fact that the Nautilus is walking right at him, 
in a straight line. Jay Wu, though, trying to walk away in a straight line of his own, but the Bolas is going to stop him right in his tracks. A beautiful snare from the Zyobo, oh. followed up with the ulti. There's a flash in for the Death Charge, and Joe the Hobo will be the one to blame. Oh. Now, the follow-up semi-engage off the Jin ulti. Only one bullet landing, and that onto the Ezreal. Not as effective as it could have been, but Lambry's going to get caught out nonetheless, oh. and Lulu will be the one on the Altar of Sacrifice. Notorious Gad trying to toss Ebola's into the fray may regret that, as now he's being chased down the river by four members of the enemy team. <laughs> and there's just really no good end to this story, not for the kill. Oh, yep, there's the kill in the end. Not exactly what Vanderbilt wanted to do there. They saw them rotate up top, and I was going to talk about how great that very quick rotation was, but just as quick as they moved up top, they moved right back down to mid for that fight, and they reap the rewards of that trading two for one, or three for one, rather, in the end. So, this is just getting better and better for Vanderbilt as this game goes on. UNC, they, they're they trying to find openings now uh, in the around the mid lane with their jungler, and that was really smart. That was perfect timing, but they just weren't quite quick enough. As UNC have now dug themselves into a little bit of a hole here. UNC were to some degree the favorites coming into this one if you just looked at the regular season records. They've only dropped games in series where they've lost. They've, they've that convoluted sentence makes any sense. Meanwhile, down to the bottom though is the slow on to zero turn. At this point, the Nautilus is no longer all that easy to bully. And I don't know if they can actually go for this dive, but it looks like UNC has different opinions on that. There's a turnaround, a lot of CC onto the Diana, even with all the protection. It looks like she'll make it out alive. But that, that was a lot of effort forced into just yeah. the Nautilus kill. Yeah, and I feel like a good amount of that, honestly, taking so long was due to this Diana having low AP at the moment. She went for the Rod of Ages, she's going for the Nashers, but she started with that Stinger. So, not having a lot of just raw damage quite yet, and very reliant on that Lulu to keep her stuck in there onto that Nautilus. Incredibly close, but her tankiness did pay off. That is Thrill of the Hunt. <laughs> I didn't realize the audio out. cues worked like that from the spectator point of view. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Every time uh, the throw of the hunt target changes, we get to hear it. I, I don't know about yeah. that one. Um, anyways, Dragon make, is going to Make sure that you know that it's there. Oh, man. Um, Uh-oh. Got that spectator? too? Yeah, your spectator client yep. having some issues? That's unfortunate. Yeah. Give us just a few moments here, folks. I'm going to try and sort this out. Uh, it looks like... This is the same exact bug that happened when we were starting. Okay, it's going. Is it going for you? All right. I got we're back. Here. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We're back. Five, six, yep. Get this okay. Yep. Weird. Um, yeah, I don't know I, what's going on. I'm having some issues with Spectator the today. Of Riot Spectator oh. Client. Oh, no. I mean, that's a cool animation on the blue buff and all, but <laughs> I would prefer to be able to see the action. Oh, boy. Sorry, folks. Um, It looks like the Spectator Client is having some issues right now. Give us just a few moments here we'll try and sort this out in the meantime oh, oh. no no still the same time mark 19 17 it looks like you might be going into pauses but they're not displaying looking at chat there are people having ping spikes oh and uh that's yeah it looks weird. like the it looks like those were pauses but the graphic is not displaying that's very very strange right. but we are back in the action now yeah uh, apologies for that folks um for some reason Normally when you go into a pause, it goes all CP a ton and you get to see what it's hard. Yeah. You don't panic as a caster. <laughs> you know, right? That's the point of getting a little heart attack today. So. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, but let's let's get back to the game at hand. What does yep. UNC do to climb out of this ditch that they've stumbled into? Because this game is by no means irreparable. I mean, they've got some pretty important tools. I mean, they've got a Trinity yep. Force on their Yorick with a bit of defensiveness to back that up maybe split pushing is the answer they've got a rod of ages stacking on the uh diana which is possibly going to make her something of a threat in the later game like is it picks and split pushing is it team fighting what what do you think here blaster i think they should be looking to try to get some picks that's going to be the easiest way for them to get back in this game as as is per usual when there is a gold deficit like this it's usually split up if they can just pick off the Zyra or something, pick off a few oh, easy targets and make plays off of that! 
speaking of, there's the uh, empowered bolas landing on the Vandy Landy. The Zyra ulti not going to be enough to save that AD carry. Meanwhile, the Zyra goes down as well, and it's bottom lane Stu for the side of you and C. Zero Eternal, though, here for a little bit of revenge as he hooks in onto Notorious Gag, saying, hey, remember that first blood? You know I do. Turn around back on the Man of Sex now, as he's going to fall pretty easily as well. And two are traded back for Vanderbilt, as they do not let that fight go unpunished. Two for two trade. And those are the types of picks that they needed, but they didn't have the Ezreal there. They didn't have the Yorick there. And it ended up just, two, just two, being two, a much two, quicker... Yeah, it ended up being a much quicker rotation from Vanderbilt, and they're able to punish overall uh, and trade very favorably mm -hmm. in spite of them not starting off that fight. And that is going to bode very, very well for them. But I, I think another thing that UNC should be looking to do is maybe chill out for a little bit, try to farm, and wait for their carries to really to really hit their stride here. Because this Diana, starting with Rod of Ages, uh, she's definitely no pushover right now, as we do see her with three kills, two assists, decent, decent farming right now. She did work in that last fight for sure. Nearly got three kills, even. Um, but the Rod of Ages just isn't fully stacked yet. She's not at her peak tankiness, and that is just a matter of time. She doesn't need to farm, she doesn't need to get kills or do anything like that. Certainly, that will rocket her even further forward, and that's what we're going to see here. It's going to be really oh, dangerous, no. though, because Vanderland has Joe the Hobo following him into this fight. And Zero Eternal is just too tanky to tank down quickly. And that's just a Spectre's cow on this Nautilus, and he just feels unkillably tanky. Poor man on this Diana right now. He's just not able to do anything without this Rod of Ages stacked, without his second this item completed. He just... He's yeah, that... In this is... Help Jiwu. And Notorious Gad, once again, just can't find an opening. And even through the stealth, we're going to catch him. And that is Cat. Yeah, UNC... Man, they just need to play back a little bit. Going for picks like that is great, but the biggest issue is... They need these carries to really scale. They need they need this Ezreal to hit his stride with that Muramana as soon as possible. To getting close to it. So the Baron, yeah, they I mean, they this Nautilus is so tanky right now. They're able to do it. The smite is down. It's and really it's dicey. Well before the rest of his team, however, the Baron has already fallen. It will be a kill back onto the Zyra, but one kill traded for the Baron. That's a kill. That's a trade I take any day. They may actually turn one back around. Vanderbilt looking potentially to engage. Lambry going for it. Glitterlands. A little bit of an aggressive play there from the Lulu. Gonna get himself caught out and have to flash back. Man and Virtuoso may be able to chase this one down, but this fight could still fall one way or the other, and this would be really aggressive of UNC to actually chase this out. Yeah, incredibly aggressive at this point. I mean, they have no favorable position anymore. That worked out fantastic. I was really worried about their ability to engage in onto a fight during the draft phase, and you saw yeah. it right there. They they didn't have anything reliable to jump into that fight with. Maybe the Rengar Lulu combo, but Victoria's Gad has fallen really far behind, and they just weren't on the same page there. UNC, yeah. they have a ton of damage and nothing to get it in. Yeah, and even even the damage is kind of lacking at this moment because, like I said, they just they still need to scale. The Diana has now. She's now hit her Nashers. The Rod of Ages is fully stacked, so that that point is kind of dead and gone. This Ezreal still needs to get the Man Immune to even start to deal a decent amount of damage. He's just finished the Trinity Force this moment and pick up the pickaxe, so he's getting close. But Vanderbilt is already being very punctual with this Baron buff. Already gotten at least one turret with it here. They're looking to make it even more onto this inhib turret. 24 minutes, 25 even. Our ulti onto the secondary turret, but the inhibitor turret, pardon me. Notorious once again is going to kind of whiff on the Rengar ulti. Doesn't have any targets that are worth jumping onto. I think maybe going into the next draft here, and if you are UNC, you might want to start looking to the next draft. Maybe we, yeah. we look to see UNC pick up a more utility focused game okay, because the Ezreal didn't have a good lane, hasn't been able to engage in the turn. Nice start. Oh, that blocks out to Eternal Engage, but Notorious Gad is so squishy. He needs to jump out of the fight as soon as he goes in. We'll see if Man can do any work. No, he has to flash out too. And there's just nothing to back up these fights, even if they're still. 
Aria's Gat almost going yeah. down. The fourth auto quitting for quite a bit as it chunks off his backside. A bowl is tossed out, but that's not going to do anything to stop this engage. Flash forward from Joe the Hobo as he looks for a snare. Landy Landy with the spell shield is going to land that fourth auto. Or maybe just the uh, deadly flourish, or maybe the fourth auto flash. Oh! Onto the Lulu and claiming the kill. 21 Virtuoso has to flash away from an aggressive Juwu. And Vanderbilt loses no one, gains three kills, and pushes in onto an inhibitor. That is as perfectly as it could have gone. Yeah, pretty much. And I mean, the engage was kind of botched, but it's still. They still had more engage than UNC does. Yeah. Even though the Nautilus failed his hook to get in, there's just still not enough damage on the side of UNC to really make anything happen, even when. They have a favorable position like that. We saw a man get onto the back line of two members. He bursted down Vandy to about half health, but could not finish the job. That was all he had. And that is not a good situation to be in when you're somebody like Diana that wants to get up close and personal like that in these fights. The peel was there as well. He immediately flashed out as soon as he dives in. And I mean, that was about all she wrote. That was all the engage that they, they had. Notorious Gad was caught in the front line before he could even consider ulting in which had already been burned as it was. And I gotta say, a lot of this just comes down to the fact that Vanderbilt's composition is so much more reliable and easily executed than UNC. Yeah. UNC have to find flanks, they have to get really creative picks, they have to maybe just split push their way to victory. They can't just straight up team fight, and we've seen them try to do that again and again. They, they're not yeah. playing to their strengths, they're playing to their opponent's strengths. As Jehu might be a catcher, but you have to keep in mind, he does have a Guardian Angel. He's going to buy a little bit of time for his team. Maybe not here. Oh, this is a dead run. Okay. He yeah, the teleport. Way. That's what UNC needs to be looking for, but they need to be able to also get something off of these picks if they're going to make them happen. Otherwise, they're basically, they basically count for nothing. That's what we're going to be seeing here. That's just one pick. It, the GA was there, even though it didn't save his life. It was enough of a it was enough of a stalling uh, item in that case that this bot lane is now shoved into the tier two. The top tier two has already fallen, and now we're seeing Ominous Mirror and Zero Eternal rotating into the mid lane, looking to push a third. And Vanderbilt is just all over the map. The full rotation, the rotation completely across the map is coming through here. And now they're in position to dive if they want to. Oh. This mirror does take a bit of a chunk though. to clean up those gravelings. However, this secondary turret is going to be dangerous to defend, especially with Jaywoo now on his way out of the base and able to realm warp in once he gets just a little bit closer. Yeah, 3,000 range on that. About a quarter of the map give or take a little bit, so that's uh, pretty far. He can warp, he can realm warp right down to the bottom lane now from where he stands, so. But, however, Vanderbilt will not be looking for that at the moment. And they will just be falling back. They got what they wanted, they got the bottom tier two, they got the top tier two as well. And keep in mind, again, they got those two turrets after their mid laner got picked. They didn't get any kills, no, they didn't have to take the fight, but they are the ones completely in control of this game. They have the only initiation on either of these teams, and they decisively have the lead. They can decide whether the fights happen or not in the first place, so they just opted to not fight. They zoned off, they got the turrets that they wanted, they got a little bit more gold. Now 13,000 in the lead, pull back, set up for Baron in 40 seconds, and that will cruise Vanderbilt to a pretty comfortable victory, I feel. They just have to not screw this up horribly at the Baron, and it's certainly something that can happen. I don't want to trash on them or anything like that. They haven't shown very much weakness this game, but certainly a huge risk uh, with every single Baron, but you just got to play it smartly. If you deny the 50-50, then a lot of that risk just melts away instantly. And it's it's honestly not going to be that difficult to take a very easy and risk-free Baron against UNC's composition. The yeah. Last time a Baron was taken it was much more risky. It was seven or eight minutes ago, and the teams were much more even. And Vanderbilt still just didn't even get engaged on. Jin sat in the back of the Baron pit, ulting, and nobody could do anything but glitter lights him. But there's the flash over the wall. Victoria again trying to steal the Just instantly deleted. 
fight. Now there's the dive to the back from the Diana, but Vandulady once again just he dropped to have health and there's nothing left. Realm weren't gonna be pulling them to the mid lane now, and this is pretty easily going to be the final push to victory in game one for Vanderbilt, unless something drastic happens. Yeah, and I don't think anything drastic will be happening, except for the entire team respawning at once with 10,000 more gold in the bank than they currently have. And that would just, that will never happen, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't for UNC. Uh, I don't, I don't think that's possible. Uh, that is going to be game one, going over the in this series, they, uh, they do want to take the next two games. However, we're going to see whether or not they're capable of that once we get past the draft and pick and ban and all of that sort of juicy goodness. Give us a few minutes to get all the players together, folks, and we'll be rejoining you very shortly.